Let's go for one hundred and fifty dollars a pair. Would you get one? Uh, whatever. If you, you know, I won't yes. make you commit to that. I'm yes, sorry. Yes, I would. I put you on the spot. I support local businesses and innovation. Of course, especially in Brooklyn. As long as there are no follow-up questions, I'll take two. Dang. How's that sound? All right. Next Perfect up. Perfect Valentine's Day gift, though. So, so that she can always reach me lose. and I can always reach her. Don't want to lose you. Baby. I wish I had reception less sometimes, so that okay. people would stop expecting me to get back to their texts. But nonetheless. Hmm. An excellent invention and one I will invest in soon. All right. Make a map of Soulville, Black America. Those are the instructions given for the live art project called Mapping Soulville. And right now we're going to find out what a map like this means and how it's created from the project's creator, artist Aisha Cousins. Welcome back to VK Live, Aisha. We love having you here. Thanks for being here. Thank you for having me. Now, your project is called a performance art score. What is that? It's a set of instructions for a live art project, um, and it oftentimes looks a lot like a cooking recipe. And you know, you follow it, and um, it's more about like the process of doing it than like um, I, I write the instructions that are the process of doing it, and then people interpret it in whatever way they want. All right. So, what got you started on this seemingly Herculean task, mapping Soulville? Um, you know, I live um, in what used to be one of the largest predominantly black neighborhoods in the country. <laughs> So wait, are you endeavoring Which one? this? Right, are you? Which one used to be most predominantly? Which one? Um, Bedford-Stuyvesant. Yeah, bed of it's, course. It's, it's statistically changing a little. So did, did that have anything to do with that at all? Like you want to grab something before it's gone? Like does it feel like you're making a record before things do, do change even more? Yeah. You know what? I think it, um, I mean, it definitely shifted that, that, um, that change has definitely, um, I guess, made me a little bit um, so more. Yeah, it does make me. It makes you value more. You know, anything that you think you might lose, you start to value a little bit more. Mm -hmm. um, but I've always really been interested in just like the the evolution of uh, Black culture within the U.S. because it is this kind of um, it's this kind of hybrid culture. You know, like we're not quite the countries that we came from, and we're all these different cultures mashed up here. And so, but so I was interested in how. Um, uh, black America is a funny thing in that it's um, like you can't really find it on a map per se. You know, because there's, you know, like when slavery ended, it's not like we got like a reservation. Right. Um, and so we're just sort of scattered all over the country. So if you wanted to make a black, a map of black America, mm -hmm. you know, how would you do that? Um, and that question kind of. So one of the it. metrics, one of the things you did was, I know there's always this sort of long running joke. If you want to find black people wherever you are, look for MLK Boulevard, like Martin Luther King Street, wherever you find Martin Luther King, there's going to be some black people there. But you have Malcolm X was your ground zero for yeah. one of these. Yeah, yeah, because I actually lived around the corner um, from Malcolm X Boulevard. Still do, actually. Um, I live kind of like sandwiched between Malcolm X Boulevard and Marcus Garvey. Um, and uh, there, you're right, every, I think like most predominantly black neighborhoods have an MLK Boulevard. Mm -hmm. um, and I was like, well, I wonder what um, looking for the Malcolm X Boulevards would lead to and what, um, what the ability and like follow through of, of like naming a street named after Malcolm X would tell you mm -hmm. about, you know, the space in which that's happened. Because yeah. um, I, I wasn't there when it happened in my neighborhood. Um, but I think it is an interesting sort of question of like how those streets came to be, you know, how did yeah. people work together to make that happen. So we're looking at a visual right now. We see uh, Malcolm X as represented in D.C. Is that Camden? Camden, Alabama. Alabama? Never yeah. heard of her. And Coolidge, Arizona. Yeah. You performed this for adults and last year at the Brooklyn Museum for children. What was that experience like? Um, it, it is interesting. Um, originally, it was kind of meant as a thing where you do the research, you look up the streets, um, and that's more of an adult conversation. Um, and then you actually use the abstract map that you've made to give tours. Like you stand on a Malcolm X Boulevard and you give tours mm -hmm. of your one that you're on, but also the ones that are in this abstract map you made. Um, and so, uh, with adults, it's been it's been really cool. Um, that's how I learned about the ones in say like Coolidge, Arizona, and Camden, Alabama, and so on. <laughs> um, and people always add things to it. You know, they tell you things you didn't know as you're doing it. Um, right. Doing it with children was really interesting because um, the Children's Museum wanted to do something, and I'm totally down um, to do things for small children, but yeah. their age range is ages two through eight, um, which is much younger than the age that would say get on the internet and go looking up Malcolm X Boulevard. Yeah. <laughs> so I was kind of stumped, stumped, you know, by the challenge of it. Um, so we're looking at a pair of tiny feet at Brooklyn's uh, museum over there checking out Malcolm X, but I saw that Brooklyn happens to be the first in the nation to rename a street after the man. Yeah, as far as I know, ours was the first in 1985, actually. Um, Harlem's was in 1987, which I didn't know until I started doing this project. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. 
We're the best. <laughs> <laughs> so are there other instructions you can just share with our viewers right now about how they can get on, in on mapping Soville? Malcolm X was one of the things. What else can we look for? Um, well, so the versions that I do are usually, um, they usually involve these maps of Malcolm X Boulevards. Um, mm -hmm. And there is a mural that's a walkable mural um, that's more child friendly because kids can actually walk on it and understand, you know, that it, each line represents a space. Um, and that is up right now through February 26th at uh, Industry City. Yeah, um, Industry it's, City Gallery. Yeah, I love it. Yeah, yeah. And it's, um, it's there, uh, was it Thursdays and Fridays from 10 to 1, Saturdays and Sundays from 11.30 to 5. Um, and it's staffed by the Brooklyn Children's Museum staff as part of their Our City exhibition. Awesome. It's like a satellite to the <laughs> Brooklyn Children's Museum. You can I take your whole family. Exactly. You can just roll over there. Yeah. And I have a question. You kind of alluded to this fact of keeping a record of the neighborhood as, it, as you lose it, as you put it. Mm -hmm. I mean, what message do you hope this conveys to people about what the neighborhood was like 10 years ago versus what it'll be like 10 years from now? And, mm -hmm how it's changed or something like that, or how you've lost it? Yeah, I mean, that, that's a great question. I actually, um, the name of my art studio is Artifacts from Soulville. Um, and it comes from me being a museum educator and kind of carrying around these artifacts from early New York City history. And um, we'd look at the artifacts and try to figure out like what these objects told us about the lives of the people who made them and used them. Um, and so it kind of gave me this perspective on history that I apply you know, sometimes to places even that I'm living in, in, in the moment now. And I, I kind of like, um, I hope that the project helps people recognize how these Malcolm X Boulevards really are artifacts. You know, they do tell us um, a lot about the time and the place in which they were made and the people who made them. So what's this poster calendar? That is a fundraiser um, for an iteration of the project that I am hoping to do um, later on uh, this year yeah. um, with merchants along Malcolm X Boulevard in bed -Stuy. We have one in our hot little hands here. <laughs> yeah, and that's, um, that's like kind of truer to um, the original version of um, what the instructions are. You make this collage, um, mm -hmm. a collage for each street that you find that's based on the street, um, right. the shape of the street on the map. So that one was made by four volunteers in Bed-Stuy, um, and there are four streets represented. I think it's um, Dallas, Harlem, Camden, Alabama, and we also found one in Clerksdorp, South Africa. South Africa. Oh my gosh, so how do people make a map? Um, so you literally like look up, you know, like a map, like a Google map, um, and then you kind of trace the shape that the, um, the street is, the Malcolm X Street, um, and then you take that line and you recreate it using tape. So, for instance, you see that like line with the dots on it? Yes. That one is a, uh, that one's Clerkstorp, South Africa. And this one with the, so like, that one that goes, okay. that's Clerkstorp. And then this one with the green dots on either end, that's Harlem. Oh, oh my yeah, gosh. of course, New York, our grid is straight up and down. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> well, that's great. Where do people find out more about this and some of your other work? Why don't you give us that information? Okay, great. Um, you can actually get, um, if you want to support the fundraiser, you can go to Artifacts from Soulville, mm -hmm. S-O-U-L-V-I-L-L-E.com, um, and you'll see a picture of that uh, calendar. You just click on it, and there'll be a link at the bottom. Um, and then um, for more about... Um, the work that I do just in general, you can go to AishaCousins.com. And what ultimately do you hope that people take away from all of this and this project? Um, I hope that people think critically about, um, about the streets and the history of them and how they came to be. And, you know, kind of like um, move beyond kind of like seeing them kind of as background noise to our lives, but, mm -hmm. and move to kind of seeing them as these kind of like treasures and artifacts that they are. They're kind of a, I see them kind of as um, a kind of collective heirloom you know, that um, a prior generation of black Americans created and is kind of passing on, you know. Aisha Cousins, well, thank you for passing on your art and your talents and your time with us here today. Yeah. We really appreciate it when you're here. Thank you. This project has legs. I can't wait to see what you come up with next. Well, thank you. <laughs> Big time. Thank you.